Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. So, um, thanks for being here, Father. Thank you for inviting me. So, as you know, um, Alexis de Tocqueville used to say that the rich and powerful, they don't go into exile because they don't have to. And immigrants, there are two forces always. A force that pushes you out from the country where you come from, and here you have two immigrants. You emigrated from Eritrea, I emigrated from Mexico. And then some energy and some pull from the countries that accept us. Uh, right now there are 240 million immigrants in the world, and in just this year, 4,500 people have died trying to come from Libya to, to Italy. So, Father, your cell phone is very important. Uh, many immigrants, thousands of immigrants who are coming from Africa and from other parts of uh, the continent, uh, they have your cell phone number. How did they get that cell phone number and what do you do with it? Uh, how we get is, is not easy to say because it's a different way. But I, I can say one journalist in 2003 who visited Libya, uh, he, who gave them the first time my phone number for the group of Eritrean and Ethiopian uh, uh, refugees in Libya in detention center because he want to uh, translate for him because he, he tried to collect uh, his the story of these people. So you gave him your number? Yes, then these refugees, he put my phone number in the wall of the detention. Uh -huh. <laughs> he write and he say, for any emergency case, call this number. <laughs> so all the people who pass by that detention center, he, he get my phone. Do you have it here? Your yes, cell phone? it's in my... Uh, yes, well, well, it's, it's here, but it's in my jacket. All right, so um, <laughs> <laughs> one quarter of all the immigrants come, uh, just, just in this year, 345,000 immigrants uh, are coming to, to Europe. Uh, a quarter of them are coming from Syria, others from Iraq, Afghanistan, Eritrea. Most, yes, from Eritrea, from Sudan, especially now from South Sudan and uh, uh, Darfur, and from Ethiopia, especially from the Oromia region, and from mainly from West Africa, yeah. So when they, when they call you, you give the GPS to the Italian Coast Guard, and that's how they help them, right? Yeah, normally when I receive a distress call, the first thing that I do is I need to collect all the information. Mm -hmm. but that means uh, what kind of boat, how many people is there, what is the situation, the condition of the people, and the exact position. Uh, most of the time, even these people, he don't know how to get this position. Then uh, I need to explain them that you use your, your mm. satellite phone, you have a GPS. So go to the menu, find the, the GPS, and tell me the number you see. Then I collect all this information. Then I call the Coast Guard, Italian and Maltese Coast Guard. Then I, even I send by email to all the organization. Now we have many private uh, companies or, mm -hmm. or NGOs who involve in this issue to rescue the people. Then I, I send all this information by email, by phone, and I ask, please go to rescue these people. Okay, so as you know, uh, here in Europe, there is the, the way they call the immigrants. They call them sometimes um, not only illegals, as they do some people in the United States, but they say they are uh, economic immigrants not political refugees? This uh, uh, is not easy to do this kind of distinction Why? between mm. refugees and, and economic. First, may in some countries you have some regime, some government, he use the poverty like political instrument to control his people and to reduce the freedom and the capacity of these people. So how we can define these people is economical migrants because in his country he's the poverty, but the poverty is used by the political regime to... Mm -hmm. At the second time, many of people from Africa, are, he start his journey for economical reason, but during his journey, he become victim of human trafficking, mm -hmm. organ trafficking, violation, torture. So he changed the condition of this when he come here in Europe, mm -hmm. is not only economical reason. That's also for political yes. reason. So as you know, we have someone in the United States called Donald Trump, a 
I'm sure you're aware of it. And just yesterday in Cincinnati, he said that illegal immigration, he calls us illegals. He's wrong, but he calls us illegals. He's saying that uh, he can stop illegal immigration by building a wall. So tell me about the wall that is being built in Europe against immigrants. But uh, this kind of idea or policy is only a big chance and big business occasion for traf human trafficking. In these last 15 years, what we see, I personal, I denounce a lot of time, more restrictive policy in Europe, more business for human trafficking. Mm -hmm. in every year, the human trafficking organization in the Mediterranean Sea can collect around one billion dollar. One billion dollars. Yes. <coughs> so a huge business. So the, the alternative is to, to fight against of the human trafficking and at the same time to have legal migration is to open the legal arches, humanitarian corridor, resettlement program, humanitarian visa, a bilateral agreement between the country who need labor, but you need to choose those more poorest country. Otherwise, these people don't have the possibility the, to, to realize his dream, the, to have a job, to have a dignified life in his country. He's obligated to find To find a way out. to come here. Yes. Um, as uh, Father Musi spends his time talking on the phone, um, Regina Catrambone, co-founder of international, an international president of migrant, of short aid station is here. And you've saved uh, 30,000 immigrants so far? 30, Over uh, 35,000, yes. So tell us about your organization. What do you do? So in 2013, we decided <coughs> with my husband to celebrate our uh, business year uh, in the Mediterranean Sea. And we went to Lampedusa. And uh, our Pope arrived in Lampedusa and he made the appeal of uh, uh, stop to be, to be global. This global uh, situation was destroying the world. And uh, we decided to act. In that moment, uh, we have everything in line. We have the heart, we have the brain, and the money because we worked. So with Christopher, uh, we decided to buy a ship and uh, helping them, uh, uh, saving them. They were drowning. At that moment, uh, uh, only the States, Italy, was uh, working out at sea with a fantastic humanitarian mission, Mare Nostrum. And uh, we were uh, just a tiny boat, a drop in the ocean. But uh, this uh, drop in the ocean, in 2015, bring other 10 boats. So we created that uh, uh, fantastic uh, effetto a catena mm. that bring many people out at sea. So support uh, entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs need to see behind the, the stigmatized image of a migrant. We need to feel that these are people and that uh, they can give us so much. So support entrepreneurs uh, in, in uh, arranging their dreams because uh, we make it uh, and many other of you today can make it. So I believe in joint forces. I see here uh, many friends. I see Padre Zerai that I met uh, in Geneva. Mm. And uh, we are uh, in uh, this uh, front line together. A wall in the sea cannot be built. And the wall just uh, make you don't see the problem. It doesn't mean that you can fix it if you don't act. So thank you. Thank you, Regina. Father, as, as we say on TV, we only have one more minute. How can we help you? Well, we, <clears throat> you, all of you, you can start to do something to help. First, how to prevent this, a lot of days in the desert and the Mediterranean Sea. That means if we don't create a dignified life in the neighbor country or in the origin country, these people, he can't stop it. So we need to create something there. Like my organization, he started to do with the scholarship in Africa for the refugees in Ethiopia, in Uganda, in Cairo, in Sudan, like this. 
this is one can is possible to create. Uh, then to create job for them in Africa. Then the third way is to create this legal access. So with agreement between NGO and the government, we can create the legal co humanitarian corridor to keep and protect the refugees and to give them the international protection here in Europe, in US, in Australia, in Canada. That, that way we can stop and fight against the human trafficking and organ trafficking is going still now in Sudan, in Egypt, especially in the Sinai Desert, and in Libya. That is the way you can help me. So we ask if you have a lot of donators, welcome <laughs> to give scholarship, to create job in Africa, and to even to create this humanitarian corridor. Because we need to transfer the people by legal, that means with airplane, you need to pay the ticket, you need to pay the visa, you need to provide the basic necessity for these people. Well, thanks so much. And just one more thing. Uh, call them immigrants. Don't call them illegals. No human being is illegal. Thank yeah. you very much. No one is illegal. <laughs>